Excellent. Um, well, first of all, thanks so much for having me, and uh, uh, it's a it's a real pleasure to, to talk to you guys. I'm glad that Bruce flagged me down at Bad Camp and set this up, um, and uh, I'm excited to just give you guys a quick demo of uh, of the Pantheon experience, and then answer any questions that you might have about um, how um, how the service works, or how you can use it, or or anything else of that nature. So, um, just at a at a really high level, you know, um, Pantheon is uh, trying to make things radically easier and more effective um, for organizations, individuals, and businesses to have a great web presence. And we're doing that by automating a lot of the processes around developing and deploying and running and scaling and maintaining over time uh, Drupal, um, which is open source CMS that I've been involved in for almost 10 years now and, uh, and really enjoy working with. Um, so the the Pantheon is not just is you can think of Pantheon as a replacement for hosting, but it's also a version control system, a wor developer workflow, a collaboration suite, and a number of other things all rolled into one. So it it doesn't fit neatly into one of the traditional uh, boxes that you might have in your tool set now, and that's because we're really trying to do things differently, and we think a way that that offers a pretty compelling value uh, both to developers and to site owners. Um, but I, I sort of come from the developer side of things, so that's the perspective I, I, I'll bring to this demo, um, as you're going to see. So what you're looking at right now, um, assuming you already can see my screen, uh, is the, the developer dashboard. Um, this is what you, you know, this is my uh, personal site on, uh, a personal account on Pantheon. And uh, I have a couple of sites that I, that I host here, and then I have a demo site that's set up. And so basically, one of the first things is that, you know, it sort of organizes all your Drupal sites into one place. Um, you know, you have an uh, easy way to manage um, your SSH keys. You use those for Git and FFTP access, um, credit cards if you're, uh, you know, paying for sites and so forth. And you can just sort of see all your sites there. Um, you can also download some useful developer development tools like uh, Drush aliases so that, you know, you can use a remote connection to get access to the sites. So um, adding a site is really easy on Pantheon. And we, uh, for developers, we, we really encourage people to think of, um, think of us as a, a way, a place to do things really quickly and easily. So this could be like live demo one, two, three. Um, and in real terms, you know, we have people creating and deleting and recreating and, and sharing and stuff sites all the time. And, uh, and that's because, you know, from, uh, from zero to a, a working Drupal environment should take less than five minutes um, with Pantheon, sometimes even less. And we're working on speeding that up all the time uh, to make it quicker to, to set up and deploy these things. Um, while this is going on, I'm just going to open another tab so we can progress sort of the cooking show style. You never watch people chop onions. Um, if we go into the, uh, the webinar demo dashboard, we're going to go into the actual uh, developer dashboard for a site. So again, Pantheon is, is oriented around developers and then the, the sites, the projects that they work on. And so uh, this is one that I haven't touched in a while, but as you can see, um, there's a few different things going on here. Um, first of all, every site has three environments. There's dev, test, and live. And that's so that we can ha you can have a workflow for, for building and deploying changes, not just while you're in the process of setting up a new site, but also really important for maintaining existing sites over time, building new features, making changes to design, and so forth. Um, OK, I'm just going to advance this step here, doing two things at once. And let's just say. We'll do a Panoply because I like. Oh wow, there's a new uh, the, uh, test demo. So we also have a bunch of like install profiles on the platform, and we're working on adding more support for sort of pre-baked start states. So you don't just have to start with vanilla uh, Drupal. I'm actually starting one with our in-house start state called Panoply, um, which is a cool site for building uh, with panels. It's a cool base for building with panels if you've ever used that uh, Drupal suite. Um, so uh, within you know, dev, test, and live, all three of those are fully functioning uh, environments. Um, as you can see, I'm going to open up the dev environment. It's going to be a little slow the first time, because on Pantheon, part of how we can uh, actually offer free sites to as many people as want to come along and sign up is that when sites are idle, especially dev sites, for, uh, for a certain amount of time, we actually sort of spin them down. So like their, their PHP processes and MySQL databases are actually all asleep. And it can take you know, a good 30 seconds to get them up and running the first time. But then after that, they're awake and everything works. So as you can see, it came up OK over here. That was a little slow, but if we load another page, it's going to come up much quicker. Um, 
each of these are fully functioning environments that you can work on, work in. Um, each, uh, each environment uh, has basically the same set of tools in the dashboard, although there's a few things that are unique um, to, uh, to, to Dev and Live. Um, we run some status checks for people, and we're you know, always working on adding more things here so you can kind of like find out if we think there's anything you should be aware of or noteworthy about the platform. Um, we will monitor your PHP error log for you, so you don't have to worry about finding that. That'll surface in the dashboard actually in real time. As errors happen, they'll flood into the dashboard. Uh, it's kind of cool. Um, you can add custom domains. Um, you have to actually be a paying customer. That's kind of our you know, gate for going live, is that if you want to put your own domain on the website, that's when you'd have to start paying. Um, but you can add those uh, custom domains once you are paying to all three environments. So if you want to have your own custom dev domain, you can do that on Pantheon. It's kind of fun. A lot of people like that. Um, we do uh, uh, allow people to make backups um, sort of on demand. And there's also a backup schedule, again, for paying customers. You can have backups happening nightly at a, at a time of your choosing, um, which is a nice thing uh, to be aware of. And all the environments have the ability to, to lock or unlock them. And that's basically, um, if you're familiar with uh, HT access, it, this puts an HTTP authentication on, on the environment. So you can keep your dev sites locked. Uh, a ni nice important thing to note about dev sites is that even if you don't lock it, uh, we make sure to not allow them to be spidered by search engines, which is kind of an important thing that sometimes people forget, and then it has bad consequences. Um, in addition to, to all those features, uh, we, you, know, you communicate with, you, with your site via Git. So uh, 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 version control is the basis for all the Pantheon workflows. We think version control is incredibly important, and we try to make it really easy for developers, even those that are new to version control, to, uh, to get their head around it. So every uh, Pantheon site has a Git repository set up for it at the beginning. That was part of what uh, this, this process over here just did. Um, and uh, and and uh, and you can you know check it out. And as soon as you push any code to the master branch, if you're familiar with Git, it will show up in the dev environment. But you don't have to use Git um, to work in the in the environment. I mean that and that's important for two reasons. We support SFTP or on-server development. And I'm just going to toggle this really quickly so you can see. Um, this is important for two reasons, I think. One is that there's, there's definitely a learning curve to version control and to Git in particular, because it's a wonderful tool with a lot of options and a lot of power, but it can be intimidating to first-time users. And, uh, and, and also, you, as a developer, even an experienced developer, you really need to be able to debug in the platform that you're deploying on. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just the worst thing ever. You know, everyone has a, has a sad and dies a little bit inside if you're you know, uh, speculatively committing code and pushing it to see if you can find information about a problem or get some debugging output. You really need to be able to do it in real time right on the server. And so we have this uh, on-server dev mode because we think that's you know, super important and you wouldn't really be able to do Pantheon without it. Um, and I'll show you how that works. I have connection information here, and there's uh, SFTP. I have a, 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 a client that I like called Cyberduck, and I'm going to go ahead and connect Cyberduck to the, uh, uh, to the, the dev environment here. So I'm going to put the server in, change the port number. I really want to make this like a little bit friendlier because I think this is the, the, the obscureness of the port number and the randomness of these names is annoying. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm going to tell it where my public key is. And I'll allow that. And here we are in the code directory. And then uh, what I can do, uh, for instance, is I could make some changes to like the maintainers.txt. This is a totally trivial change, but hopefully you guys will get the, the power of what I'm doing. I, you know, Cyberduck integrates with my text editor, and I can just do like a hello world. And I save that. And that goes and gets uploaded um, onto the, directly into the, the, the maintainers.txt. And back on Pantheon, Pantheon's actually already detected that this change has been made. Um, if we go here, we can see it. And there's my hello world right here. And more interestingly, Pantheon's aware that I made that change. It says that there's one change ready to commit in the dev environment. And uh, you can start typing a commit message. You can also see exactly what the changes were. So I can see there was one change was made to maintainers.txt, one line. And I can actually even go and get the diff for this. Um, if I wanted to. And this can be helpful if you're you know, working collaboratively with people and you're not sure the state of things or if you just want to know what it was you changed. And this could be an example commit to maintainers.txt and 
just do like that. That actually will make the commit in Git. So you can look at Pantheon as actually a way to interface with version control if you're still sort of working on getting started. That um, that is uh, uh, you know doesn't require you to bust open a command line, doesn't require you to install you know a lot of tools. And we can see down in my commit log, there it is. Um, and uh, you know all all these things that make it into the commit log are similarly you know uh, inspectable, and you can see what changed. Now, because we do everything with version control, I'm just going to toggle back into Git so that I can show you the uh, the the, um, the update uh, up, update from upstream. Um, because we do everything through version control, we can provide Drupal core updates um, via the dashboard. So every time you know a new release of Drupal comes out, or there's a new release of the the, the Drupal distribution that you're you're working off of, in this case Panoply. Um, we can just apply the updates automatically. They show up here, and you would just click this button, and then these uh, commits would flow right in down here. Um, and, and that really reduces the overhead and the burden and the repetitive work, especially for people who manage a large number of sites. When Drupal core releases come out, you know, having to go in and, and actually manually make the changes to all of them and work, work on deploying that. Pantheon can kind of cut that down from a several hours slash all day thing, depending again on the number of sites that you maintain, to something you can handle in a few minutes. Um, and we're actually working on ways to make that even faster. So for instance, you could opt in to automatically have updates apply to your dev environment and get a notification and you know, maybe do these from the from the overview page, it'd be kind of cool if uh, if we could like you know go back to um, to this page and like you know do a thing that like pushes out updates across you know all all three of these at once. Those are those are things we're working on because again we're all about saving developers time and making people more efficient, focusing on the really important stuff, which is actually building the website. Um, the deployment workflow uh, is uh, something we, we sort of automate for you, a best practice workflow where you push code up from dev to test to live, and you pull data content back down from live to test to dev. Um, that is uh, the bulletproof way to do Drupal continuous integration and deployment. And so basically what happens in, in this environment is anytime there's anything in dev, test will encourage you to run this process, which, uh, which is you pull the files in the database from the live environment and deploy the code from dev. And that essentially makes it so that the test environment is giving you a highly accurate, very clear preview of what your deployment is going to look like. So in this case, you know, I'm just deploying a text change to maintainers.txt. But if I was deploying a module update, you know, I would be able to try to run update.php via Drush, or I could do it manually. If there are, oftentimes, you know, people end up with you're deploying uh, some some new code, and there's a sort of post-deploy configuration step. You know, you can do work to encode that in an update hook or featureize everything, but there are just enough edge cases in Drupal, and we've all experienced this, I think, where you have to go in and, and do something after you deploy. Um, and uh, this process allows you to ensure that you know what that is and have it all down and exactly scripted. And hopefully it's not, you know, it's a, something that fits on a three by five index card and so forth. And like, if you needed to do it again, you could just say, okay, um, well, my code's there, but let me pull the data back again from live to test, and then I can re then I've you know sort of refreshed the t the test environment with the live data, and I can rerun my deployment process, um, which uh, which is a, a really really valuable tool. You know, when you deploy, you don't want to take the site down, you don't want to have it be like a panicked moment. We like deployment to feel like you know smooth and powerful and winning. Um, and then over here, now that I've got the stuff ready and test, when the time when the time is right, I can click here and it'll deploy into the live environment. Um, a few other things that we do on Pantheon that are important to note. Um, frequently clicked button, clear caches. This will flush both the, uh, the Drupal caches as well as the Pantheon's edge layer. Um, part of what we provide for all these, uh, the sites in Pantheon is not, not just this dashboard and these development tools, but also a highly tuned, high performance uh, stack. So you know you're getting the benefits of uh, properly configured PHP, FPM, uh, the latest versions, APC, a well-tuned MySQL instance, uh, access to our optimized uh, file storage system called Valhalla. You're getting and you're getting a varnish cache, reverse proxy caching. You can enable Redis. You can enable Solar. All these sort of like high-end tools for running you know 
speedy or, or large volume traffic Drupal sites are built into the Pantheon platform and you can develop with them uh, you know, in your dev environment and then you know, go live with them. So clearing caches can be an important thing to do. We have a concept of team management um, and this is really, really helpful for, uh, for people who do a lot of projects. You know, in, most web development projects are actually collaborative. I mean, at a minimum, there's often another person who's a you know, the stakeholder or a product owner or a person who approves things. Um, you can bring them into this uh, as well as your development colleagues and work together on sites rather than having to share an account or do a bunch of legwork to set someone up on a system. It really is just like type an email address. If they're already on Pantheon, they'll be added. If they're not on Pantheon, they'll be given an invitation and you'll be given a free site credit if they sign up. Um, so you can game the, that system if you like. And, uh, and, and, and it, it provides a better way to work together. And again, that's something that we're actually investing a lot in improving too, because teams and the, the process for people who manage and maintain you know, sites as their profession, you know, those are the people that we're really trying to serve best with this product, as professional developers who do this you know, every day because that's their job and we want to make sure that they're able to do the best possible job they can. Um, Let's see, not a lot else to show in the dashboard off the top of my head. We keep track of all the things that are happening on Pantheon so you can see the status, like if something's hung up or it's taking a long time, you can, you can follow it here. You know, if we were to clear the caches, that would show that this was going on. And you know, that, that's kind of a nice peace of mind thing to have. Um, also, just so people aren't worried about, you know, opening a second account for a new project. You just kind of, you know, if you're doing something with a new stakeholder, invite them to come in, you get a free dev site and it's designed to kind of like keep the system running without, you know, too much manual intervention. If you have a case where you just want some more free dev sites too, you can just ask. There's a button in there once you run out and we're happy to grant them for people that are doing more projects. We just sort of start with two because it seems like a sane number. Um, in terms of uh, uh, support on Pantheon, um, we provide uh, access to the support system to all of uh, all of our customers, even the the people that are using it for development uh, at the free level. I mean, obviously, we kind of give some priority to paying customers, but we want to make sure that developers at all levels are able to figure out whether Pantheon's a fit for them, get to know how to use it, and can give us their feedback on the product. Um, at the higher levels, people get access to you know quicker responses and also the kind of 24/7 on-call emergency support system, which is a requirement for some sites. Um, and that sort of brings me to just if you're looking at Pantheon for r real projects, the various plans to talk through. Um, obviously, it's sandbox. The development sites are free. There's really no better way to evaluate Pantheon or get a, your head around what it does or figure out if it's a fit for you than just to use it. Um, it, uh, it, it you know, there's no risk there other than you have to invest a little bit of time in, in seeing if it's for you. But it's totally free, and, and you should just sign up and, and test it out right now. Um, when you're ready to put a real site on it, there's a, uh, you know, there's a choice of service level. So personal is our low end, uh, as cheap as we can affordably provide it um, uh, 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 package. And it's designed for small sites, you know, a blog, uh, a hobby project, um, something that's not going to get a lot of traffic, that's not going to have a big database footprint or have a lot of uploaded files. Um, for sites on the very, very low end, you know, we're, we're not able to compete on cost with like the, the completely commodified cheap shared hosting, but you know, we offer a heck of a lot more value. So the idea is that you know, if you have a large number of sites and you want to standardize on Pantheon or you want to try it out first with something very low risk, um, the personal tier is there to sort of offer, make that, make that possible. Um, the professional tier is for, for sites that are for you know, uh, uh, a, a business or an organization or, or someone you know, that's, uh, that's actually using uh, their, their web presence for you know, a very, an important purpose. Um, hey, Josh, I think we might have lost him again it again. Yeah. But at least it was quicker this time. <laughs> well, I re I caught the crash notice. I uh I I, bl I blame Webex. <laughs> blame <Totally>. Webex. <laughs> All right. So, we're back to well, am I seeing you seeing my desktop? That's interesting. <laughs> All right. Um I think maybe just keep talking. Okay. Um, we'll we'll keep going. So yeah, and I'm just speaking to the pricing stuff now. So the um, 
Uh, so the, the real difference with Pro is that you can get, uh, you can use SSL, get a static IP address, handle more concurrency. It's just like, you know, more horsepower. Um, the next step up is business, um, which is if you have something that's kind of mission critical, um, the big difference at business versus Pro is that we provide uh, failover and high availability. So um, the worker processes are actually distributed to, constantly distributed to multiple endpoints um, within our infrastructure. And so if any one has a problem, it'll immediately fail over to the other. And, and so you can uh, mitigate a lot of uh, uh, potential, you can mitigate potential downtime that way. And then for uh, mission, for, for businesses and organizations that you know, want to have a relationship with their service provider, need a high level of support, need access to that 24-7 on-call option, um, the enterprise plan is there for those for, for, for folks. That, that also goes for sites that are doing millions of page views a month. Um, probably some, sometimes you can get away with that on the business tier depending on how much of it is cacheable, but for really big sites, you know, we, we recommend the enterprise option because it's just, you know, we'll go through and work with you on making sure that the launch is successful. Um, that makes a big difference in terms of how things work when the, the, you know, you first cut over the traffic. We've had a lot of success with that. And the last thing is Zeus, which is um, uh, a, um, uh, am I still on? Um, the last thing is Zeus, which is uh, uh, for, for people who have a large portfolio site. Cool. Um, so, I have a question on the, the Zeus. Is there anything smaller than if you have hundreds of sites? Because cool. we're probably somewhere, we're, right now we're using the, the personal um, level of service. but. I could see us having more than one one site, um, you know, five five to ten. Um, hey guys, I'm sorry. I I've never had um, WebEx crash on me this this uh, this much. I'm, I either must have installed a new version or I'm doing something differently than normal. Um, um, but you guys were talking a, a little bit. I, I can sort of, you know, just take your questions at this point. I'm happy to answer anything that I can. Yeah. So right now, I'm I'm curious about that Zeus option because we don't have hundreds of sites. We're not anywhere near that big, but we are using um, the Pantheon, the personal level of service, that $25 a month, and running this sort of multi-headed installation. And so, mm -hmm. you know, a level of a service offering where you could have like three or four independent sites, you know, and pay something per month might be an interest, you know, another, just another interesting offering. Yeah. So the, the, the kind of the, the, the way that we, the way that we do this is um, uh, if people are looking for like a package deal, the, the Zeus option, it really is, is for people that are doing high volume and are, are looking also particularly to manage a lot of the sites, um, with their own custom start state. So like we, we, the, the original example of this, uh, the first Zeus customer was uh, UC Berkeley, and they basically built a install profile of Drupal, a distribution that included their, um, their theme. So it would, you would spin it up and it would look like a Berkeley site immediately. And then also the, the integration piece for their, you know, uh, whatever, CalNet, um, authentication system, so you could log into the Drupal site with your student uh, or uh, faculty credentials, and and then they're rolling that out to you know the, about a little over 100 uh, sites so far. It's set to grow to 500 by the end of the year, um, and then they can maintain that centrally. That's kind of the the, the power of Zeus. If you have uh, sites that are you know by nature independent. Um, you can just add more sites to your account, right? There's no limit to the number of sites that you can have under a normal Pantheon account. The the pricing is all per per site. And if you want to, if you're looking to do uh, a package deal, um, that's something that the, the the that we will do with folks um, usually as part of a larger enterprise agreement. It's it's totally common for us to have customers who come to us with like one flagship property that you know needs a high level of service and then a number of smaller properties and we can kind of roll all that together into one deal for folks. Got it. Okay. Other questions? I think a lot of the, the people uh, uh, in the Federation who are working in Drupal are, are sort of extending Drupal or extending doing PHP extensions uh, or linking to uh, uh, software services, and I wonder what, how the you know, where where's the handshake between what they can put up on their 
on the Pantheon and, and what they may have to put on another server and make remote calls to. Do you have any guidance on that? Sure. So um, the I, I'm a big fan of people using a web services or a service-oriented architecture in general, um, and, and we have a lot of people that do you know neat and useful things with that on Pantheon. So um, in I think there are a lot of it's really use case dependent. There are a lot of appropriate times to to look at a web services style um, integration uh, in terms of what you want to do by extending Drupal. You know you have access to all the code. I, I, I and I apologize if that wasn't uh, super clear before, but it's you know you can add any modules. You can add any. It's a fully functioning PHP runtime environment, so you can add any PHP code you would like. Um, in terms of installing extensions to PHP, like that need to be compiled in. That's not something that you have the ability to do on your own, but we can we work with people on this type of stuff uh, to determine whether it's something we can support um, but either generally or, or as a specific thing for, for folks. So it's kind of like a ask us. We've, we, we have a lot of the, this, this doesn't come up super frequently because we you know, have everything you need to run Drupal, but if you were looking to do, I don't know, some kind of very specialized uh, uh, type of work and you, you know, needed a, a, a relatively um, obscure PHP or Peckle extension, we might have to work with you on that. The other thing is that in most cases, the PHP extensions uh, that are of that level can just be installed as a library into the site's code base itself and then included at runtime. Um, most of them don't need to be compiled in at that level, but some do. Does that, does that answer the question? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. I mean, like Aaron says, the uh, the whole federation, the, our whole organization, is is uh, is now running on on Pantheon. And uh, um, what I really really like is how you make explicit the best practices of going from dev to test to live. Uh, um, a lot of people have difficulty, you know. Uh, spinning up a site and then and throwing it on the web and then wondering why you know it's not working as they as they thought it was. So uh, I just want to congratulate you guys on making that you know uh, an integral part of what you do. Yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate that. Um, and that's something that we're trying to bring. That same perspective is what we try to bring to, all, to as many aspects of the platform as possible um, in, in that we make the sort of the best practice the path of least resistance and kind of the, the thing that happens if you just, you know, if you, because the truth is it's a complicated world and you got a lot of stuff going on in your organization. You got a lot of stuff going on in your workspace. You have a lot of stuff just going on in your computer screen and, and it's a natural human thing to kind of just click the biggest button. And uh, it's, you'd be surprised if you make the, the, the easiest thing also the right thing, um, people are do the right thing without having to think about it too much, which is, which is great. Um, and we're hoping to be able to bring you know that to, to more. You know, we're working on some, uh, some, some new features to allow uh, for branch-based development, so you know you can have a um, some like relatively major changes going on in a branch of the site while you make minor you know updates or CSS tweaks, whatever on the main line. Um, and I think uh, if we can nail that in the way that we nailed the deployment workflow, we will have done a, the world a great service. Because I've just been a part of so many projects where that whole branching workflow question ends up becoming a huge time sink and a huge blocker, and uh, and sometimes goes horribly wrong. So uh, look for that, those features to come out hopefully before DrupalCon. Um, it should be pretty exciting. That sounds great. Um, any other announcements going to happen between now and DrupalCon? Um, well, there's going to be there will be some other. In terms of major features, I think that's going to be the biggest one that will you'll that will be visible to customers. Um, we're working on uh, we're actually working on finishing a, a deployment behind the scenes that upgrades our Valhalla uh, file server uh, infrastructure to its fourth iteration, which is a really major improvement and will will improve stability and performance for uh, basically everybody. Um, but that's something that we've just been we, we it's a process both to do the development work and then to do the deployment because we have thousands of active sites and uh, we can't flip them all over at once. Um, so that's been going on, and uh, and when it's done, we will we'll probably do an announcement. But it'll kind of be an after the fact. Oh, that's nice, and and ideally, people will just you know they won't necessarily see it as a feature. It'll just be everything is a little bit faster. Stuff doesn't get hung as often. There aren't any wonky file issues, and and uh, and and service just improves. Um, we're working on as part of the feature branching stuff. 
uh, some additional capabilities on the on the team side um, because right now uh, there's uh, the the this probably doesn't impact you guys as much, but for a lot of the shops that we work with, they're like professional development shops, they want a better workflow for sort of handing over ownership to a site to a customer. We support that now, um, and we're, we know that, but it's, it's just not as good as it could be. So that'll be a, a part of it. And then also maybe some features around limiting access um, for, uh, uh, for some team members, like dev only, so they can't deploy. That's been an, something that's come up in the past a few times as a, as a hotly requested feature that we might be able to do. Um, we're, we're also going to be doing some other stuff in terms of uh, uh, case studies and, and the like. Um, we've been doing an awful lot of work over the past year, but we haven't been, we've been so busy working, we haven't really been telling anybody about it. And so part of uh, part of what we're, we're working on consciously um, in 2013 is actually getting the word out about all the things that Pantheon does. Um, and so, you know, doing things like this webinar. And again, thanks for having me. Um, there'll be some announcements that are, that are of that nature, but again, it'll be more like, here's a case study or here's a new, like uh, the service offering that we have. It won't be so much uh, features in the dashboard. The biggest stuff going in there will be this branching work, which is, I think, going to blow a lot of people's minds. Cool. Um, do we? Let me ask if anyone has any other questions for Josh. Otherwise, we can uh, we can let him go. And okay. Well, thank you guys very much. And I, again, I apologize for not catching that first crash. It's terrible to have dead air in a web, uh, webinar. But uh, I appreciate you guys hanging in there. And again, thanks for uh, thanks for the invitation. And uh, hopefully, I'll see some of you guys at uh, DrupalCon Portland. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you in Portland, and we'll uh, we'll edit out the uh, uh, little crash part from the YouTube. <laughs> thanks, I appreciate that. No problem. We all blame right. WebEx. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Cheers. Bye. Oh, bye.